For years, Justin Trudeau has worked tirelessly to cover up the shocking security failures that occurred on his watch. Chinese spies broke into our highest-level virology lab and made off with some of the nation's most sensitive research. Yet Trudeau pretended there was nothing to see and tried to shut down any investigation at every turn. Now we know why. New documents reveal the depths of China's infiltration on Trudeau's watch were far worse than we imagined. Deadly viruses were shipped to a Chinese bioweapons lab. Our intellectual property ended up in the hands of the communist military. And it seems to all go back to Trudeau's failure to protect our national security. But when conservatives moved to get to the bottom of how this happened and hold the liberals accountable, who rushed to Trudeau's defense? You guessed it. His reliable allies in the NDP. They use every trick in the book to obstruct and delay, shutting down the hearings before any damaging facts saw the light of day. Canadians deserve answers, but Justin Trudeau would rather we stay in the dark. It's time Canadians shone a light on the liberal government's shocking dereliction of duty and cozy relationship with China that jeopardized our safety. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we dive into today's video, take a quick second to follow us on Twitter. You won't find the blunt truth about Trudeau's endless scandals in the mainstream media. Their liberal bias hides the real stories. But our Twitter feed breaks through the spin and cover-ups. We tweet multiple times daily, delivering straight facts on Trudeau's hypocrisy and failures. We'll leave you the link down in the description box. Tap that follow button now so you never miss our next viral tweet roasting Trudeau. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. The concerning story of how Chinese spies broke into Canada's highest security virus research lab has taken another worrying turn. In a bold show of cynical political maneuvering, Liberal and NDP members of Parliament blocked an investigation by Parliament aimed at getting to the truth behind this alarming failure in national security that happened while Trudeau's government was in power. Mr. Chair, I, Mr. Chair, I request a recorded vote on this. Thank yes, you. That's, that's fine, point, Mr. Chong. There, point of order. It's, it's point not, of order, Mr. Chair. In, on a, on a point just, of order, yeah. it, it's not debatable what Ms. Khalid just... Uh, I just want clarification to be effective. What Ms. Khalid has moved is to shut down debate. That's, I'm so that's sorry, Chair, but debate. no, I refuse that's to debate. let that's debate, Mr. this 106 Ms. forward to, yeah. to, to become political gander for, Ms. for my Ms. Uh, Khalid, I've already addressed colleagues. that with Mr. Cooper. And, uh, Thank you. And for those who are watching at home, this is a dilatory motion to uh, stop the meeting before a decision is rendered. So I am going to ask the clerk, it is non-debatable, Mr. Chong has asked for recorded division, um, and I'm going to ask the clerk... Sorry, Chair, it sounds like you're debating a little bit there. On, no, I'm explaining. On the... I'm explaining, Ms. Khalid. Okay. Thank you. Okay? I'm explaining exactly what, what's going on here and that there is no further debate, that you have asked that this meeting be adjourned without a decision of the committee being made. I'm explaining. Because this is not the mandate of the committee, Chair. That's your opinion. Go ahead, uh, Madam Clerk. The vote is on the motion to adjourn the meeting. Yes, six, nays, four. So the motion to adjourn does carry uh, by Ms. Khalid. Uh, this meeting is now adjourned. Their obstructionist actions raise serious questions. What are the Liberals and their supposed political opponents in the NDP trying to hide from Canadians? Why are they going to such extreme lengths to protect Trudeau's government from examination and avoid accountability? Does their own failures and questionable decision-making while in past governments implicate them in enabling Beijing's bold espionage operations? What is clear is that the security breaches at the National Microbiology Lab in Winnipeg were an unprecedented invasion of Canada's defenses by hostile Chinese agents. The very real danger this posed went unnoticed for years due to staggering carelessness and incompetence by security agencies accountable to the Liberal government. Canadians deserve answers, but instead they are getting cover-ups. The disturbing news about the Winnipeg lab first came to light in 2021 when the media reported that two scientists, Jan Puchu and her husband, Keating Cheng, were fired for secretly transferring sensitive information to Chinese government labs, including China's top virus research facility in Wuhan. However, the full extent of their betrayals and China's infiltration into Canada's biotechnology remained hidden from public knowledge due to the Liberals' obstruction. The Trudeau government spent over two years basically denying there were any major security issues. They blocked the release of documents on national security grounds, defying four separate orders from Parliament to disclose them. The Liberals even took the outrageous step of suing the Speaker of the House to prevent the truth from coming out. Their determined stonewalling worked as intended, delaying revelations until after next year's federal election. 
But eventually, under unrelenting pressure from opposition parties, the government agreed to allow specially approved MPs to review unedited documents and recommend what could be safely released. The disturbing contents began emerging publicly last week. They showed the liberals' casual dismissal of concerns was a bunch of lies. The damage done in service of Beijing's military and economic goals was chilling. According to intelligence reports, Ms. Chu developed deep cooperative relationships with a variety of People's Republic of China institutions, including laboratories tied to the Chinese military. She passed along Canadian intellectual property and know-how they coveted deceiving authorities and even working directly with a leading Chinese bioweapons expert. Her husband, Chang, was deemed an equally serious threat, but incredibly, even after multiple security red flags were raised, the pair continued having broad access to pathogens at the Winnipeg facility for months. Deadly Ebola and Hennepa viruses were even shipped to the Wuhan lab after authorities learned about Chu's duplicity. This stunning negligence put untold Canadian lives in danger. Canadians deserve to know why these break-ins were not detected and stopped sooner despite obvious warning signs. However, now that the truth has finally come out after so much liberal obstruction, Trudeau wants to clamp the lid shut again. He and his liberal partners moved to instantly stop parliamentary hearings into the affair before damaging testimony implicating them was heard. Trudeau was counting on his reliable allies in the NDP to prop up his minority government and help him avoid accountability. Sure enough, the Socialist Party was happy to comply. An emergency meeting of the Commons Access to Information and Ethics Committee was called after the revelations. This was a perfect place to get answers about the national security system being compromised and investigate the Liberals' cover-up attempts. Conservative foreign affairs critic Michael Chong introduced a motion to investigate the entire troubling saga, and he said the Liberals' conduct has been a disgrace. Mr. Chair, by saying this, I really, truly believe that we have a job to do as parliamentarians in this committee to hold the government accountable. The government defied four orders of the House of Commons and its committee for these documents. We called the president of the public health agency in front of Canada to condemn him for this defiance of this order and for refusing to hand over the documents. The government subsequently took the Speaker of the House of Commons to court and subsequently called an early election, which had the effect of dissolving the four orders. And after three long years, we finally have gotten access to the documents and we need to continue this examination in order to hold the government accountable. We cannot let this defiance of Parliament that took place three years ago go unanswered and unexamined, and we cannot allow these national security breaches to go, uh, to continue. And that's why it's so important I think this committee adopts this motion, examines this matter, and I hope produces a report with recommendations to improve uh, the government's performance in these matters. Thank you, Mr. Chair. However, Liberal MP Ikra Khalid jumped in to move a German of the meeting. In other words, the Liberals wanted to abruptly shut down the hearings before they even got started in order to foreclose scrutiny of Trudeau's government. This 1064 is not necessary. It's not urgent. It is not in the mandate of this ethics committee. And Chair, for that reason, I move that we adjourn this meeting. Khalid gave the laughable excuse that the Conservatives were just playing political games and that the government had already addressed all problems years earlier. This is obviously false given the alarming revelations that were only just uncovered despite Trudeau's obstruction. But Khalid's partisan maneuver would have failed had the NDP opposed it as they should have. Instead, to Trudeau's delight, NDP MP Matthew Green sided with the Liberals to quickly gavel the meeting to a close. Just like that, Canadians were denying the answers they deserve, all to protect Trudeau and his government from further embarrassment. The obstruction witnessed in shutting down the hearings is just the latest example of Trudeau dodging accountability, but Canadians are catching on to his games. The recent Durham by-election sent a strong signal that frustration with Trudeau is growing. Jamil Giovanni's big conservative win in the Durham election shows lots of trouble ahead for Justin Trudeau's shaky liberal government. This clear thumbs down for Trudeau's choice shows Canadians have had enough of the liberals acting high and mighty, causing scandals and making empty promises as they keep power for eight years now. The strong conservative results in this area near Toronto that shows what the whole country thinks suggests Trudeau fatigue is setting in and his time is almost up. Canadians are fed up with him overspending, making life too expensive, and insulting people who criticize him. Trudeau might get kicked out sooner than he thinks. Lots of voters came out excited to share their frustrations. Trudeau and his Ontario liberal buddy Stephen Del Duca 
campaigned hard but got rejected. Trying to scare people about conservatives also flopped. Canadians clearly aren't buying what Trudeau is trying to sell after too many years of all talk and no action. Polyev's energetic new leadership has conservatives likely to gain in liberal stronghold areas like the GTA. Trudeau is fast losing the support of middle-class Canadians who feel he's out of touch with their values and struggles. His days living at 24 Sussex after the next election are looking shaky. Canadians have had enough of Justin Trudeau and the Liberal government's carbon tax cash grab. A new poll shows that over two-thirds of Canadians oppose increasing the federal carbon tax on April 1st, yet the Trudeau government seems determined to plow ahead with their misguided and unfair climate change plans regardless of what people actually want. Ordinary Canadians are struggling with rising costs of living, high inflation, and skyrocketing housing prices. The last thing they need is another tax hike that will drive up the price of gasoline, home heating, and essentially everything that is transported. But instead of providing relief, Trudeau is content to make life more expensive and punish hardworking families. It's no wonder opposition to the carbon tax is widespread. His policy does nothing to help the environment while hurting Canadians' wallets. Even members of Trudeau's own cabinet recognize the unpopularity of this tax. That's why they rebranded it from the carbon tax to the fictional Canada Clean Feebate, because they know the previous name left a bad taste in people's mouths. But no amount of lipstick can cover up this pig of a policy. At its core, it remains nothing more than another money grab disguised as environmental policy. If the Liberals actually cared about affordability or listened to Canadians, they would scrap this tax entirely. But it seems Trudeau would rather pick Canadians' pockets than address their real concerns. The shocking news of Chinese spying at Canada's top virus research lab in Winnipeg shows a serious breach of national security. The Trudeau government's efforts to hide and obstruct investigations into these breaches raise serious concerns about their responsibility and commitment to protecting Canadian interests. The collaboration between the Liberals and the NDP to shut down inquiries further undermines trust in their ability to prioritize national security over political interests. With the recent Conservative victory in the Durham election and growing dissatisfaction among Canadians, Trudeau's government is facing increasing pressure. Canadians are demanding answers and a government that is open, accountable, and focused on addressing their real concerns. The time for change is coming and Canadians are eager for leadership that puts their security, values, and the well-being of all citizens first. Well, that's all for now. What else is Trudeau hiding from Canadians? How many more security failures and scandals will emerge when his obstruction finally ends? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.